Hey, Casper, your new ABC connection is K2TV. The suspect in the Unabomber case is safe and sound in the city where two of the bombs went off. There could be light at the end of the tunnel in a long-running battle between Wyoming and Nebraska over water rights. And helping others for most of her life has earned a Casper woman the distinction of someone you should know. All that and much more on the Sunday edition of the K2 News. From KTWO Television in Casper, Wyoming's news team. Casey Smith, Austin Jenkins, and Aaron Anderson Sports. This is Wyoming's K2 News. Good evening. The man accused of an 18-year campaign of terror is now in the city where he'll face four charges of mailing bombs. Two of the mail bombs proved to be fatal, and authorities say Ted Kaczynski... ...near a Casper baseball field, plus police officers will be out in full force for the holiday weekend, and you can help find missing children just by watching TV. It's time for your K2 News at 10. This is K2TV's News at 10. A man dies days after an incident where Cheyenne police restrained him. And an epidemic in China affects a family in Wyoming. Good evening, everyone. I'm Flint Adam. And I'm Lindy Patton. Those stories are coming up. But first tonight, multiple stab wounds lands one man in the hospital tonight. Casper police say the 44-year-old Casper area man was found near a Casper youth baseball field on West 13th Street. A concession stand worker found the man in his truck outside the youth baseball office just before five tonight. You could see some visible stab wounds on his face and he was coherent but kind of droggy. He had made a comment that he didn't know how long he would be, had been sitting out here and he didn't know who had done it. Police say the man's injuries aren't life-threatening. They're still investigating but don't have a suspect at this time. And a death investigation involving the Cheyenne Police Department leaves many unanswered questions. Officers were at the scene when Robert Dick stopped breathing, but were they the cause? k 2 Steve Strain reports. All right, whichever. I like chocolate, Andy. Thanks. Still ahead tonight, expect to see a few more of the boys in blue this holiday weekend. And it was the opening night of the Wyoming State Track Meet. George K. will have all the actions coming up in sport. From Wyoming's news leader, K2TV, this is K2's News at 10 with Lindy Patton, Chief Meteorologist Andy Shaw, and Sports with George K. Closed captioning for K2 News is brought to you exclusively by Wyoming.com. Closed captioning for K2 News is brought to you exclusively by Wyoming.com. Good morning, Wyoming. I'm Rachel April. Coming up, West Nile virus will tell you what's being done about it right here at home. Plus, there's a way to make money off of junk mail or spam without being a spammer. <laughs> and I'm Andrew Kozak. I lo you love that word. Uh, if you're light-skinned like me, it's time to think uh, about investing in some sunscreen. You'll certainly need it this week, the way our temperatures are going. The full details are definitely coming up in weather. It's Tuesday, June 29th. And Good Morning, Wyoming starts right now. This is K2TV's Good Morning Wyoming. Talking about that spam story yeah, earlier, so I, I know. think... <laughs> spam meaning the internet story coming up. I always think you of the canned, the canned ham. Talking about the, yeah. the can of spam. Yeah, I know. So, anyway, it was too You early. wouldn't be doing a story on that, I'm sure. <laughs> um, well, let's take a look at our weather. We've got some warm temperatures on our way, definitely. So, uh, you know, right. shed the suit after work, because you're definitely going <laughs> to not... You're not going to want to dress... Uh, Dress warmly as we get outside. Dress pretty lightly today. We're going to take a look at temperatures across. This is K2's Good Morning Wyoming. Welcome back. We're joined now by Evan Brand with Handle IT, and that's the IT company based out of Laramie here. Thank and this you. is all part of our technology segment. We're going to be talking about corporate culture in a minute, but can you give us some background on your company? Sure. Started Handle 10 years ago. We just had our 10th anniversary, mm -hmm. and um, more or less by accident, I fell into the field of uh, originally juvenile justice. Um. Six. Welcome back. Well, have you ever thought that your oral hygiene had anything to do with your overall health? Coming up at 10, the candidates for Wyoming's two U.S. Senate seats had their voices heard in a series of debates. 
And it was a great weekend for, for antique lovers. These stories and more next on the K2 News at 10. You're watching the K2 News at 10. Good evening, Wyoming. I'm Marielle Ashley. And I'm Mike Mahoney. Thank you for joining us this evening. Well, Senate and House candidates squared off today in a debate at Casper College. The debate was hosted by the college as well as KCWY and the Star Tribune. We attended the debate between senatorial candidates John Barrasso and Nick Carter. Candidates Barrasso and Carter discussed their plans for the future of Wyoming, plans that look very different. Live from the K2 studios in the heart of Wyoming, this is the K2 News at 10. With Matt Stafford, Corey Rose, Chief Meteorologist Kyle Gravlin, and Sports with Dave Greek. The National Education Association is making college affordability a priority throughout the country and is encouraging Congress to increase funding to make it easier to pursue higher education. The National Student Chairman from the NEA is visiting Wyoming colleges this week to encourage students to participate in the political process. Coming up, Wyoming's latest unemployment numbers are out today. We'll have a report with results that you may find shocking. And we'll hear live from one of the state Democrat Party's top officials on what she expects from President Obama's State of the Union address tomorrow. Plus, and an organization in Casper is working to ban smoking in venues around town. We'll tell you how they plan to kick the habit. That's right now on the K2 News at 10. You're watching the K2 News at 10. Good evening and welcome to the K2 News at 10. I'm Jody on Thompson. And I'm Denise Pernilla. Thank you for joining us. The Wyoming Department. Live from the K2 studios in the heart of Wyoming, this is the K2 News at 10. With Jody and Thompson, Denise Pernula, Chief Meteorologist Kyle Gravlin, and Sports with Jack Notes. K2, Wyoming's only true HD newscast. You're watching the K2 News at 5. Good evening, Wyoming, and thank you for joining us this Tuesday. We now go to the latest on the coronavirus emergency. Overnight, the number of confirmed cases passing the 8 million mark worldwide. You're watching the K2 News at 6. Good evening, Wyoming, and thank you for joining us this Tuesday night. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic, parents across the country have put a hold on taking their children to the doctor for their routine vaccinations. But is it worth skipping those shots to avoid coronavirus infection? k Billy Floyd has the story. You're watching the K2 News at 10. Good evening, Wyoming, and thank you for joining us. Tonight, we begin with some rather sweet news as hundreds of Casperites made their way to Crumble Cookies, one of Casper's newest dessert hotspots. K2's Taylor Wurtz stopped by there tonight to see what all the talk is about. Taylor? Well, Bobby, they say money can't buy happiness, but I think you can, and I think it is in a cookie. We're out at Crumble Cookies in Casper, a brand new spot. I'm here with the owner, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, how are you doing today? Great. It has been a long, busy day, but we are pushing out cookies, um, giving our free chocolate chip cookie away, the one that started it all. So we just want everyone to taste it and experience the best chocolate chip cookie in the world. You're watching the K2 News Weekend Edition. Good evening, Wyoming. Thank you for joining us. We begin in, in the north where Sheridan County officials have declared an emergency in response to the possibility of additional flooding. The declaration issued Thursday afternoon by the Sheridan County Commission brings in state help as the county prepares for any flooding that might occur. Additional loads of sand and sandbags are being deployed to the county. The area was under a flash flood watch Friday, but officials say the emergency declaration is precautionary and there is no imminent threat. However, waterways across Sheridan County remain high and the ground is completely saturated from rain and snow that caused flooding in the area earlier this week. The Wendy Williams Show, weekdays at 2 on KFNB, Wyoming's Fox TV. Now, from Wyoming's news leader, more news, more often. Covering the latest local headlines, you're waking up with Good Morning Wyoming.
morning. I'm Samana Sheik here with your latest headlines. Get your coffee cups ready. Coming up, we have the latest coronavirus numbers. Plus, U.S. Senator Mike Enzi delivers his farewell address this week on the Senate floor after serving 24 years. We have the final total from the Gobble Gobble Give Food Drive. So stay tuned for more stories. Let's turn our attention to U.S. Senator Mike Enzi's farewell address. U.S. Senator Mike Enzi delivers his farewell address this week on the Senate floor after serving 24 years. May not get much below 30, and daytime highs get even a little bit warmer. On Monday, we're up to 46 degrees. By Wednesday, we're all the way up to 48. Now, from Wyoming's news leader, more news, more often. Covering the latest local headlines, Good Morning Wyoming continues. Get your coffee cups ready because I have some stories ready for you. This morning, we learn more about the Pfizer and the BioNTech vaccine. Meanwhile, cases in the United States are going up and stimulus talks continue. Now, from Wyoming's news leader, more news, more often. Covering the day's top headlines, this is K2 News at 10. Good evening and thanks for tuning in for your local news weekend edition. I'm Alfredo Cuadros. Coming up, the University of Wyoming is about to transition into phase four of its COVID-19 plan. What that means for students coming back to class. And a law enforcement agency starts a police academy of their own after new recruits are put on limbo to the pandemic. But first, let's take a look at our top stories. Natrona County Commissioners approved a resolution that would mandate face coverings in some county buildings at a special meeting this Tuesday afternoon. According to the resolution, all members of the public are required to wear face coverings in listed county buildings or department offices. People are also required to maintain six feet of social distancing. Wyoming's K2 Television, KTWO Casper, KKTU Shine. You're watching KFNB, Wyoming's Fox TV.